Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new QNAP TLD800S JBOD expansion. Yes, that is quite a mouthful. This is a hardware review of this brand new expansion device from QNAP. Now, I've talked about uh, the other devices in this range before. There's a little 4-bay, there's the other USB-C 8-bay device here. So why should you care about a JBOD expansion? Let's face it, JBOD is pretty old hat, isn't it? JBOD, or just a bunch of drives, is the non-RAID method of connecting devices. What that means is, is once you connect a JBOD device, the device, the host device you're connecting this to, will see a big pile of drives. So if you populate this with hard drives or SSDs and connect it to a PC, Mac or NAS system, a JBOD expansion will just show a bunch of drives. And from there, your host system can then build a RAID. It can RAID 0 and combine them all together, or it can create smaller RAID subsets or a RAID 5 and more. There's lots of different options available. But there are also hardware RAID options. The TR series from Q app have got hardware RAID built in although this doesn't have that there's lots of options that do so why should a person be considering a JBOD expansion well there's a few reasons first and foremost maybe the device you're connecting this to has got um, a hardware RAID controller built in or you would rather the host system manage all of the different RAIDs the reason being is the last thing you want is some kind of disconnection because of the fault of the system you ought to keep it all in-house and Perhaps you're utilizing a proprietary um, file system, or maybe you're using uh, a system where devices have to be formatted to very specific needs. These are reasons why JPods have always been popular. And although they're not as popular as they once was, there's still a place for them. Now, what makes this device a little bit more interesting than most is it arrived with a SAS cable connection, SFF, I believe, I believe 8088 by default, and there are two cables included and a QNAP PCIe card included too. And what that means is you can connect this to a NAS, PC or Mac system with a PCIe slot that allows you to install the card and from there you can then get some great bandwidth speeds. Now, it's worth highlighting that there are, from what I understand, a few little bumps in the road for Mac users at the moment with a lot of the Mac OS and RAID controllers not playing ball with this to a certain degree. So for now, if you are looking at a Mac hosted system and you're looking at a JBOD expansion like this, maybe double check the compatibility before you go ahead. I'm sure it will change soon, but at the time of this recording, it is worth checking that compatibility. But for PC and NAS users, this is very compatible. Now, what you get with the device, so this isn't an unboxing video, there should be an unboxing video on the other channel. And the reason I've gone for this real tight camera angle here is so you can get a good close look at this device. Um, inside the accessories, you receive a mains power cable. You have two of those 8088 cables. You've got screws of 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch hard drives, as well as uh, keys there for those individual locked trays. On top of that, you've got screws for the PCIe card. You've got first-time installation instructions and warranty information. This device arrives with two years of manufacturer's warranty. You've got back planes, and you've got that PCIe card. So let's focus on a few bits first. Uh, let's talk about that PCIe card. Now this card, once again, is to be installed inside your host NAS system or your PC or Mac, basically whatever this is gonna to connect to. The rear of this device that I'll show you in a bit has got a couple of these SFF uh, connections and the two cables combined, each one giving up to around 1.5 um, gigabyte in terms of connection. So that's again, 1500 megabytes per cable in the right area and the right media and the right connection and the right RAID, giving you up to a combination of around 3000 megabytes per second, give or take depending on the media you use, SSDs ideally, and the right RAID you use, RAID 0. There are, of course, performance dips and uh, uh, heights, depending on which RAID configuration you use. Indeed, if you go to QNAP's own website, they do list quite impressive speeds, but it's worth highlighting those speeds are utilizing SSDs. They don't hide it. They detail that they are Samsung 960 Pros, uh, not um, 840 Pros, I believe. But the fact still remains that those drives are SSDs and those speeds are indicative of that. We are doing speed tests on this right now. Some of them have already been published. We tried it with both Kingston SSDs and uh, WD Red hard drives. We should be getting lots more information on those potential speeds in RAID 0 and RAID 5 as soon as possible. So 
This is the card, the 800ES. It's got an onboard controller as well as those two connections there. And again, there are drivers available. Um, if you installed inside of QNAP NAS, the drivers are already included in QTS, but on a PC system, you will have to download them independently. And there's lots of directions from their website. On top of that, you've got the back planes to add it into different profile brackets. And that's about it really for that stuff. So we move over there, we can talk about the device itself. Now, as mentioned, this is a JBOD solution, and therefore, it doesn't have a brain, so to speak. You know, it's very much like uh, the straw man in uh, Wizard of Oz. He, th this arrives with just a JBOD compatibility. If you want to handle RAID, you've got to get your host system to take care of it. There's no LCD panel built into the front. All you have are LEDs built into the side here for real-time information about the device when it's being accessed. And, of course, individual LEDs on each drive to show when those drives are being accessed too. There's no formal connection here on the front, and there's only one kind of connection on the rear that we'll talk about in a bit. If we look at the trays, these are all click and load trays. Remove them there. And that tray, again, has got holes for 2.5-inch media, as well as the ability to install a hard drive incredibly easily. You just remove the side panels, grab yourself a hard drive, stick it inside, and then, boom, you have got your installation done it's that straightforward you don't have to fully populate the device but i will say that if you don't fully populate it um with the right raid early on it makes it very tough or sometimes impossible to expand the raid case in point if you fully if you put three drives inside this device in a raid five and start introducing those new drives the right raid controller will let you skip up to raid six but you're not going to be able to turn it into a raid zero without fully formatting the whole device so do bear that in mind the inside of this device is through there. There's SATA base for each one of these. This is utilizing six gigabit per second SATA drives. And of course, as you combine more drives, it will increase the overall performance possible via that PCIe card and cables. But bear in mind that as these are SATA drives, this isn't a case of just straightforward multiplication. So you can't just add up the overall speed. You'll only get an increase of between 50 to 120 megabytes per second, depending on the drives you use. Be they more enterprise level drives that have got 7200 RPM, to more day-to-day -day standard NAS drives that are 5400 RPM and maybe 32 to 64 megabytes of cache. And of course, the more enterprise level drives you use, the more noise they're going to make, because a lot of click and words in the more modern series of helium uh, kind of um, locked drives. Now, ventilation there is active cooling on the rear that i'm going to show you in a bit the base of the device has got lots of cooling underneath each of those individual hard drive base we have ventilation on the side there on this metal chassis and if we look at the rear of the device we can see firstly those two big fans now these fans are controlled manually utilizing a switcher at the bottom with that switch allowing you to increase or decrease the rpm of those fans now whether that's because of noise or because you need things to be a little bit cooler for efficiency, you can flick that switch. There's also a power switch at the bottom, and at the top you've got a mute switch for when there's alerts and stuff going off of the device when it's booting and more. They've got the connections that we've already discussed there, and there are two of them. You don't need to attach both cables, but to get the full potential bandwidth, you will need to attach both of them together. It isn't for daisy chaining or anything like that. And although you can see two PCIe slots here, these are not functional. These are just empty backplanes that cover unavailable slots. There isn't any PCIe slot inside this device. I'll open it up in a bit to show you. And there's a 250 watt PSU to power all of those bays. Now, if you look at the bigger version of this, the D1600S, that does arrive with a PCIe, a PCIe upgrade slot that allows you to add RAID cards and more. So if, that, if you would rather go for something like this with a potential RAID capability, maybe skip up towards that device. But this device is largely designed to be a more affordable solution for those that are looking to expand. You can't spread your RAID over both the NAS and this. They will have to remain independent to a degree. But for an 8-bay that you can create multiple slots of storage to be utilized in your NAS, PC, or Mac environment, it's quite an impressive device at its price point. Now, let's open up this bad boy and see what exactly the inside shows us. There's three screws that hold the top of the chassis in place. If we remove that there. Remove that. 
it's worth highlighting that those two SAS cable connections, those SFF cable connections on the rear, um, do govern four bays each. So each one of those ports governs four of the hard drive bays. So if you do use one cable, know that you're only going to be accessing four of the bays because each one of those is a fan out connection. So you've got the one cable going in here to a fan out inside with each port corresponding to four of the bays, two, um, two groups of four. So bear that in mind. Now if we remove the top of the chassis, pop that down there, we can have a look at this frankly incredibly well ventilated device. We've got one of the controller boards there on the side, as you can see, that PCB. Inside, if we turn that around, you can see at the top there, there isn't any PCIe slots in that corner where the PCIe uh, slots live. But there is a huge amount of ventilation inside there. There's a large amount of storage base space there at the bottom. And even the wires are quite well maintained together all the way around into that main controller board. And of course, the PSU here on the other side. On the inside, we can see another controller board at the top there. And that's the one that gives us real-time access to the LCD panel on the front. With that panel giving us some idea about the identity of the device as well as internal core temperature and access. So... It's not as brainless as I might make it sound, but in terms of RAID or an, an ROC, RAID on chip, or SOC, software on chip, this does come up strangely lacking. But that is not because it's designed that way. This is designed to be JBOD, but as far as JBODs go, it's a pretty impressive design, plenty of cooling, and if you're prepared to make sure that your connected host system does all the work, this could well be the solution for you. If you are interested in getting hold of one of these bad boys, there are links in the description. Do click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more, and do visit the links to both Span.com and NAS Compares for the hardware review, as well as updated information on this device as soon as they know it too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.